So here we are. Um, it's another comfy video, and um, it's a slightly different video this time because uh, unless you've been under a stone, you won't realise that flux has arrived. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just try and explain some of flux, which is pretty difficult because I haven't really quite come to any conclusions. So flux is an enormous model. Um, I'm using uh, Dev1, which is the biggest one, but it runs fine. I have a fairly uh, big card running on this machine, so I have 24 gigs of uh, VRAM. So it runs fine, it's quite fast. Flux is a very strange beast. It's completely different from SDXL. And uh, I just want to quickly run through the, the way I've been using it. First of all, Flux can understand prompts far better than XDXL and uh, I've got the slightly smaller clip in here but there's another one which is even bigger which is uh, makes a little bit of difference actually it uh, I sometimes work out what I'm going to do with the FP8 and then do the final with the FP16 because um, because that is uh, slightly better quality and better tonal contrasts I found slightly better details. So prompting is a big thing with Flux. As you see, I have many prompts of various kinds here, um, which I just plug in. And there's different ways of doing the prompts. You can do the prompt in, in two, the double box here. And uh, this one talks to this clip, the small clip. And this one talks to, but quite honestly, I've abandoned using it as the Differences are homeopathic, <laughs> so I've just I've just gone on to uh, using a basic clip here. I should put this workshop in. It's not there's nothing particularly clever about it, um, but you can try the options, and I'm going to work across the options here, and I try to go through the things it does well and things it doesn't do so well, and the interesting bits and bobs you might find out about it. The other thing you can do is split the sigmas. So here's the sigmas coming in, and you can split them, which, and the low sigmas make more sense than the high sigmas, and the low numbers there will make it more illustrated. You can, you can mess with it. Again, I didn't find this terribly useful. The other thing, as far as style goes, Flux is extremely limited in style. It has no idea of painting styles. It has, it vaguely knows about Pixar and Disney, so that's a good one to go for. It sort of knows about games and stuff like that. It knows no artists whatsoever. And it knows no paint styles, watercolours or drawings. Uh, it, it, it doesn't really show much interest. It does understand comics to a bit. And there's ways to make it do a better comic effect. And uh, I've left, I'm leaving some, um, so if we bring this prompt up. So you see, I've split, I've split it in, into subject and background and style. And that will make quite a, a nice comic effect. But I, I, sh I shall leave those in. Uh, you can drive it mad by putting in a load of rubbish. And it's sometimes good to put in a load of rubbish to um, prompt interesting things out of it. See so here I'm, I'm using the Jabberwock <laughs> from Lewis Carroll, which is as mad as you can get. And that brings us to a, a weird thing about Flux is that um, the flux guidance here is not really CFG. Uh, when you change seed, you get very big changes um, and you get a, a, a brilliant uh, result from one seed and the next will be just pixel garbage. But so a way, if you've got a good seed, as I have here, a way of um, getting variations on it is to go by 0.1 increments in the flux guidance. And the other thing about flux guidance is that down here, if I go down here to 1.3, around 1.3, uh, we have drawn, more drawn styles. So if I run that, so you see it's a little bit more drawn and painted. And though that one particular one looks rubbish, uh, if you go through the seeds, uh, you'll find better ones. And you can try 1.4 and so forth. So you've got a little bit of control there. And once you've found a good seed with a nice drawing or painting style, you can do riffs on variations on it by using the flux guidance and just moving it 1.1 and 1.2 along. So if we go up to 1.8 and run that, 
So you see, by 1.8, we're getting a more, uh, uh, more finished result. So that's really all I can say about this lot. Um, this is a uh, number of steps between 15 and 20. You might get, uh, the other thing with flux is the steps. Uh, step 14 might be entirely different to step 15. Uh, it usually changes around six, uh, but you might get a, a, a brilliant result from step four. <laughs> so, so flux is very annoying and hard, quite hard to control. Uh, the next thing is uh, image to image. I've not found it very useful for image to image. Uh, for one, your denoise, uh, you don't really get any changes until 0.65, 0.75, 0.85. So the lower denoise is for straight image to image do almost nothing, which we'll find out later can be useful. But uh, for doing, for prompting a, a new image as an old image, uh, such as this comic strip image, uh, flux is not great really. I haven't. It does this sort of thing we've got here. We'll uh, find another one. So this is using this prompt strategy here, this one, and that can produce quite a nice comic strip style, and which I hope might be useful. But uh, what you'll find a lot with flux is that the figure is in one style and the background will be a photograph, which is hugely annoying. But by prompting separately, as I'm doing here, does help and, and, and a few seeds. And that brings me on to seeds. With flux, uh, seed hunting is really important. As I said, you might you might have a complete rubbish next to a brilliant result, and uh, and flux is very good. Don't get me wrong, but um, but it, it it's quite hard to control and get exactly what you want. There are control nets and stuff coming out for it now, which hopefully will help, and various LORAs, which uh, the first ones <laughs> didn't do anything at all, as far as I can look at. But they were only imaginary things. I think they did. I don't know why they released them actually. So the rest of this workflow is uh, much the same. So here I adjust in between, and then we come on to refining in flux. Now refining is quite good in flux, really, because of the way that it doesn't change much. So a, a denoise of 45 and a steps of 10 will do a very nice refine. So we're we going to this one. So we put that in, run it on these settings. I'll leave these settings in. And we get a nice refine out of it. There you go. It also works well with my method of in painting. Here's the very simple version of in painting I use. <clears throat> so again, I run it at 45, 35. I cut a bit out. You see this uh, little figure here was a bit rubbish. So I cut it out, refined it, and dropped it back in again. And Flux does that very well. I, because there's been a square put in here, and Flux really very rarely seems. It, uh, there's very rarely a seam because it's <laughs> partially because um, Dino, with Dinos and uh, image to image it's so reluctant to change um, so that's one of the disadvantages from early on is an advantage later on and I think that's about it I can say about Flux really there are lots of variations of models at all different steps I have really been uh, only been using Dev1 which is the largest one but uh, overall, um, Flux is the most interesting model to have arrived for ages and ages, and it's fantastic. When you consider, I've got some examples at the end of the video, when you consider this as a base model with no LORAs, no control nets, no nothing, uh, it's an amazing model. It's much better for uh, you text to images uh, and for us poor uh, image to images. Uh, you've got to start off on your image to image with pretty much what you want. So I can do a good uh, comic strip girl out of this image uh, because it's already quite a good image. But I can't take a rubbish one and make it into a good comic strip one. It won't do it. It'll just turn. It'll just turn this into a photo. I can probably show that. Let's go and look at it. So here you go. It's not turned into a photo, but. I think you can see, despite all the prompting, that it is lost. It's not doing a nice commentary style. And this is the, almost the nearest it'll go to a drawn style from image to image. As I said, I got a better result um, using the prompting, but the um, uh, broken down prompting here 
Tron was it? This one, uh, the, the, the splitting it into styles and that uh, doesn't seem to work with the image to image. So, uh, so you snookered, or I was snookered. Someone cleverer than me will work out how to do it. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit. I'm, you know, not coming to any conclusions really because uh, it's got me a bit baffled. And a lot of people are just saying, oh, it's fantastic, etc. But, but it has some very strange things. Um, weird nipples amongst them. It won't, it won't do nipples of any kind. Male nipples, female nipples. I don't care about female nipples. I don't do not safe work stuff anyway. But it doesn't, it won't do men's nipples. I haven't tried cow's udders yet. But I, I have my, <laughs> my doubts <laughs> if, it'll, <laughs> if it'll do cows out as even. But anyway, so that's it. And uh, it's a fascinating model. It's very good. And it's um, far better quality than STXL. But uh, that's it. I hope that was interesting and useful. Thank you very much.